the next one is cartesian product of sets cartesian product of sets <coughs> what is the definition one by one let us see first one for two sets let capital a and b be the two sets be the two sets then cartesian product cartesian product of a and b is a cross b is denoted by is denoted by a cross b and is defined as and is defined as a cross b is equal to <coughs> in cartesian product of two sets the elements are ordered pairs in yesterday's class i explained what is meant by ordered pair ordered pair means open brackets and only two elements are there ordered pair where the first element belongs to first set and the second element belongs to second set second element belongs to second set or similarly if i want b cross a this is also cartesian product b cross a then the elements are b comma a where first element belongs to b b belongs to b and a belongs to a a belongs to a therefore obviously a cross b is not equal to b cross a a cross b is not equal to b cross a provided what a b are distinct sets a b are distinct sets if equal sets this is true but for distinct sets a cross b is not equal to b cross a a cross b is not equal to b cross a now <coughs> see one example for this a cross b uh, cartesian product of two sets cartesian product of two sets uh, if i take a equal to some x y z a equal to x y z and b equal to let me take one comma two therefore number of elements in a that is three and number of elements in b two cardinality number of elements is also named as cardinality now what, let me find a cross b first a cross b means for first time i, I am writing this to get the idea one comma two x y z and one comma two then what is the cartesian product cartesian product means it contains elements as ordered pairs a b where first element is from first set second element is from second set same logic here so let us choose first x x comma second element is from second set x comma one again with x or write all the combinations all the combinations where first element is from first set second element is from second set so x comma one x comma two y comma one y comma two and z comma one z comma two z comma one z comma two right all the possible ways next one uh, b cross a if i want to find b cross a what is b cross a the set one comma two and the set x y z and the set x y z that is equal to set x y z that is equal to first element one comma x next with one or write all the all possible ordered pairs one comma y one comma z next with two two x two y two z two x two y two z okay clearly clearly a cross b is not equal to b cross a okay this is one way of proving proving a cross b is not equal to b cross a and uh, see what are the number of elements in a cross b 1 2 3 4 5 6 here also 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay therefore number of elements in a cross b is equal to number of elements in a and number of elements in b same logic number of elements in b cross a also same b cross a equal to number of elements in b cross number of elements in a okay this is cartesian product of two sets and what is the here here just one point is here 
a comma b is called ordered pair ordered pair or which is also named as ordered two tuple which is also called as ordered two tuple only two positions are there ordered two tuple now let us see cartesian product of three sets cartesian product of three sets let a b c be the three sets three distinct sets okay then cartesian product cartesian product of a b c is you can define a cross b cross c or b cross a cross c or c cross a cross b whatever it is the definition is if i consider a cross b cross c then there are three elements here a1 uh, let me uh, yeah i will take like this a1 a2 a3 such that a1 belongs to first set a2 belongs to second set a3 belongs to third set follow this order a b c follow this order a1 first set a2 second set a3 third set a cross b cross c similarly similarly one can define if i want to write c cross a cross b then you write c a3 a1 a2 such that a3 belongs to c a1 belongs to a a2 belongs to b so follow this order here a1 a2 this this is ordered how many values are there three values e is called is called ordered three tuple ordered three tuple ordered three tuple so in general in general the cartesian product of the cartesian product of now two sets three sets like that product of n sets let me consider a1 a2 a3 and so on a n cartesian product of n sets is what is that a1 cross a2 cross a3 cross and so on cross a n is equal to and in this one what is the what are the elements elements of the form a1 a2 up to a n a1 a2 a n such that i will write like this a i belongs to a i yeah, that means a1 belongs to capital a1 a2 belongs to capital a2 i is from 1 to n i is from 1 to n this is called cartesian product of n sets cartesian product of a n sets here what is here ordered what is this is called a1 a2 a3 and so on a n is called is called ordered n tuple ordered n tuple okay this is cartesian product of n sets and uh, if i want to do one prob problem based on this see one example let us consider one example if i consider a equal to one two three three elements are here b equal to um, take x y and the c equal to let me consider a b two elements a b okay then what is a cross b cross c a cross b cross c means cross product among three sets a b and the c so a first a cross b cross c first element from a second element from b third element from c so what is that and what is the here element is ordered three tuple since there are three uh, sets are there so first element with one write all the possible one comma x comma a first possibility is over next one one more thing one comma x comma b correct with one possibilities any more possibilities yes one comma y comma a and another one one comma y comma b these are all possibilities starting with one starting with one and the second element is chosen from x comma y next one let us see with the two two comma x comma a two comma x comma b two comma y comma a 
2 y b and next with 3 so same logic 3 x a 3 x b x1 3 y a 3 y b 3 y b these are the this is the cartesian product of three sets totally how many elements are here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 elements are there. 12 elements are there. Okay. Therefore, number of elements in A cross B cross C is equal to clearly what? Number of elements in A, number of elements in B, number of elements in C. So, what is this? 3, 2, 2. Exactly 12 elements are here. This is Cartesian product of three sets. Okay. And next one, uh, the next topic, this example is over and product is over. Now see, next definition is uh, using set notation with quantifiers. Next one, using set notation using set notation with the quantifiers you know quantifiers what are the quantifiers uh, first one is for all the notation is this x1 there exist or for some or what is it is called there exist your first unit there exist this this is the notation okay this is universal quantifier and this is called existential quantifier existential quantifier and here what is the see the heading using set notation set means some a b c like that set notation assigned with the quantifier assigned with the quantifier for example see if i write for all x belongs to for all x belongs to s of p of x s of p of x what it denotes it denotes or represents universal quantification what is for all x means universal quantifier so represents what universal quantification quantification means assign some quantity quantification universal quantification of what see for all x belongs to yes is the set here yes is the set and p is the predicate here universal quantification of p of x universal quantification of p of x over all elements over all elements in the set yes in the set yes see the notation for all x belongs to yes p of x means what for every element of x in the set yes uh, the quantification that means p of x is for all x for all elements in the set s yes. similarly if i assign there exist x there exist x and one more thing uh, notation you may take always remember um, for all x belongs to s yes of p of x is shortened for is shortened means another notation shortened for how to write this one for all x in brackets x belongs to s implies p of x x belongs to s implies p of x and in first unit you know whenever universal quantifier is there for all is there uh, just i'm giving example uh, all dogs are animals all dogs are animals for example this statement is there how to write this statement there we denote uh, p of x x is a dog p of x x is a dog and let me write another predicate q of x x is an animal x is an animal if i write like this what is the quantifier here all all means what for all x what we have we have written p of x implies q of x whenever universal quantifier is there whenever universal quantifier is there the uh, the connection between the predicates is implies connection between the predicates is implies exactly that was used here what is that for all is there so for all x if x belongs to s 
then p of x x belongs to s then p of x this is implication implication now let us say same similarly let us say uh, for some that means there exist there exist x belongs to s of p of x s of p of x what it denotes it denotes it denotes the existential quantification existential spelling existential yeah quantification that means there exist some or for some quantification existential quantification of p of x of p of x over some elements in s some some not all previously all some elements in s previously for all use used therefore all elements and here over some elements of s and uh, shortly we can write what is this there exist x belongs to s p of x there exist x p of x this shortly can be written as e shortened for is shortened for how to write this the, the uh, i already told you all is connected by implication and as for some is connected by and for some is connected by and therefore there exist x we will write there exist x x belongs to s x belongs to s and connective is what and p of x remember there exist is always followed by connective and and for all x is always followed by connective implication connected by implication then what is the use of assigning quantifiers for x let us see what is the use of assigning quantifiers for x one example is given in the book see what do the statements what do these statements statements means propositions propositions which is either true or false but not both first one is for all x belongs to r of x square greater than or equal to 0 and uh, there exist x belongs to z of x square equal to 1 mean x square equal to 1 mean solution first one r stands for what r stands for real number r stands for real numbers and z stands for stands for set of integers this is set of real numbers and this is set of integers set of integers first one is clarification this one r is over and s is over and what is the predicate here x square greater than or equal to 0 in the first one in the first one therefore uh, for all x belongs to r of x square greater than or equal to 0 x square greater than or equal to 0 states that states that what is the structure i am giving in bracket for all x belongs to s yes, p of x structure our first model our first model states that what it states say x belongs to uh, i am i am giving here uh, let me write here here x belongs to r means what x is real number x is real number that means for every real number x square is greater than or equal to 0 correct states that for every real number for every real number x x square is greater than or equal to 0 for every real number x x square is greater than or equal to 0 this statement is true okay let us see this statement is over this is symbolic notation and this is theoretical one for every real number x x square greater than or equal to 0 right that means here since since x square is square of any square of any real number a real real number which is always square means what always positive and maybe zero also which is always greater than or equal to zero which is always greater than or equal to zero this is important 
what it states that question is like that only what is that question what do the statement for all x mean for all x mean so what it means for every real number x x square greater than or equal zero and this is my idea what is this since x square is always square of any real number which is definitely positive or zero so it must be greater than or equal to zero therefore the statement is true the statement is true that is the square of every real number is non negative that is the square of the square of every real number the square of every real number is greater than or equal to 0 greater than means positive greater than or equal to 0 means not negative so called as non negative greater than or equal to 0 means there is no negative real number therefore it is taken as non negative the square of every real number is non negative is true statement is true statement is true statement so symbolic structure is there and we are giving its meaning what is that for all x belongs to r x square greater than or equal 0 states that for every real number x x square is greater than or equal 0 and uh, uh, we are writing uh, this instead of we uh, see this statement last statement whatever this statement is there this statement is not using any x value just uh, in writtenly theoretically it is written as the square of every real number is non negative that's all and uh, this is actually original correct one and this is conclusion finally and similarly now what is another one what is that there exist x there exist x belongs to z what is this x square equal to 1 means let me write first what is it means it means what is that there exist an integer there exist first there exist there exist an integer there exist an integer uh, what is such that such that there exist an integer such that there exist an integer x such that okay let me write clearly there exist an integer x such that what such that x square equal to 1 x square equal to 1 okay this is the statement this is the statement this is symbolic notation and this is statement wise and without using x means what which can be expressed as without using x like this this statement without which can be expressed which can be expressed as expressed as there is an integer there is an integer there exist also can as there is an integer whose what is this x square means whose square is 1 whose square is 1 okay is this true statement tell me there exist there exist an x such that x square equal to 1 is it true statement anyone no it can be anything yes what what i mean there exist an integer means there must be at least one integer whose square is 1 is it true statement yes sir if it is equal to 1 only yes obviously right okay i am writing here x equal to 1 minus 1 right whose square is what 1 1 1 so the statement is true therefore the statement the statement is true correct yes sir the statement is true now another the, now so what we are doing we are assigning quantifier for a set we are assigning quantifier for a set and we are deciding whether the statement is true or not whether this statement is true or not now that is called another that goes to another leads to another definition what is that truth sets of quantifiers truth sets of quantifiers see what is the truth sets of quantifier definition is 
Mm. You write like this. Let P be a predicate. Let P be a predicate and uh, D be the domain. And D be the domain. Domain means what? Set. Whatever it is. Set. Maybe real number set, integer set, whatever it is. Then, then the truth set the truth set of what quantifiers quantifier assigned for what predicate only the truth set of p is the set of all elements is the set of uh, you write don't say all set of elements set of elements x in the set d for which for which the predicate p of x is true the predicate p of x is true therefore the truth set the truth set of p of x is denoted by the notation is denoted by this is set truth set i said truth set so there must be some set notation what is that there is an element x belongs to the set such that the p of x must be true statement p of x must be true statement now to explain the concept see in this one for this example exactly there exists x belongs to z x square equal to 1 this statement is true true for what statement is true for what for x equal to negative one, one and positive one. one therefore what is the truth set minus one and plus one that's it right that is the definition exactly what does it mean by truth set p of x is the predicate and d is the given set and what is the truth set means for what values of x belongs to d the predicate must be true statement predicate must be true statement, true statement. yeah one example to understand this concept once again uh, right. what are the what are the truth sets of the predicates of the predicates p of x q of x another predicate r of x where the domain is the where the domain is the set of integers domain is what set of integers positive values negative values including zero and uh, the predicates are given as p of x is modulus of x equal to one p of x is modulus of x equal to one and the q of x is x square equal to two and another predicate r of x is mod x equal to x mod x equal to x solution solution first one what is the truth set of p of x truth set of first predicate p of x what is p of x is given as p of x is what mod x equal to one mod x equal to one where x belongs to what x belongs to set of integers x belongs to set of integers therefore p of x can be written as p of x can be written as uh, in sets what is this x belongs to z such that p of x that is x belongs to z such that what is p of x mod x equal to 1 this is set form of the predicate given predicate set form of the given predicate now since since mod x equal to 1 is true when it is true tell me when this predicate is true minus 1 and yeah. 1 is true when x equal to minus 1 and uh, plus 1 minus 1 or plus 1 therefore then the truth set the truth set of 
P. Predicate P is what? Simply minus 1 and uh, plus 1. That's it. Just to see the definition. What is the given predicate? And what is the given domain? See, for what values of X, the given predicate is true. Those values are belongs to truth set. A simple concept. Another one. What is the second one? Q of X is what? Q of X is given as what? X square equal to 2. X square equal to 2. And this predicate can be written as, this can be written in set form. This can be written as, what is that set? X belongs to Z such that X square equal to 2. X square equal to 2. Now, um, now is it possible? X square equal to 2 for what values of uh, X? Not possible. Not possible. Not possible. Right, right now. There is therefore here. There uh, here. There is no x. There is no x belongs to z. Remember this. There is no x belongs to z for which for which x square equal to two. For which x square equal to two. Therefore, the truth set. The truth set of Q does not contain any values, right? Does not contain any elements. Does not contain any elements. Therefore, the truth set is the truth set. The truth set of Q is what? Null set. Done? It is the null set. That is equal to 5 simply. And coming to third one, R of x. What is this predicate is given as mod x equal to x. Mod x equal to x. This predicate in set form, this can be written as, written as, what is that? x belongs to z such that mod x equal to x. Now tell me, mod x equal to x for what values of integers? For all the values, all positive and negatives. Yeah, mod x equal to x is true. Is true when x is positive. When x is positive and one more value is also there. What is that? Zero. <laughs> x is positive and zero. Therefore, the truth set. Therefore, the truth set of R is what is the what are the values? 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Infinitely many. Infinitely many. This is the truth set. That is, what is this? Is set of non-negative integers. Set of non-negative integers. Okay. And one more important, uh, just uh, I think uh, you know how to write the negation of the uh, for all and for some. Just, just briefly, I'm telling. All true negation is what? For example, all true is there. What is meant by all true? I can write for all x, p of x. Is it correct? Yes. Right. What is its negation? Alex. What is negation? Alex. <laughs> negation P of X. No, Rasu Nano, whatever I am writing, just for discussion only. Okay, don't make it as a conclusion. See, uh, what is that negation? First one for all X. Negation P of X, correct? Yes, what anybody now I am writing in words. See here for all x p of x means this p of x is true. Predicate is true. For all x p of x denotes all true. When p of x is true, what is negation p of x? False. False. What is the quantifier here? For all. This indicates what? At least one is four. Uh -huh. What what this whatever you do, you are telling for all x negation p of x gives what? All false. All false. All true negation is what? All false? Yes, sir. Yes. 
అంతే అంటారా ఆల్ ట్రూ నెగేషన్ ఆల్ ఫాల్స్ ఇప్పుడు మీ క్లాస్ ఉంది యువర్ క్లాస్ ఈస్ దర్ ఐ వాంట్ టు టెల్ ఆల్ ఆర్ గుడ్ ఓకే ఐ వాంట్ టెల్ టు హెచ్ఓడి సార్ దట్ ఆల్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎంసిఎస్ ఆర్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఆల్ ట్రూ ఓకే నేను నెగేట్ చేయాలి ఐ వాంట్ టు నెగేట్ దట్ స్టేట్మెంట్ దట్ ఐ షూ ఐ కెన్ టెల్ దట్ ఆల్ ఎంసిఎస్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ బ్యాడ్ is it correct no no what i what i want to tell now then sir in no. mcs batch there is one boy okay who is very rude so the batch is what is very rude then what is the uh, impact on your batch yeah it's a very bad batch therefore all true negation is not all false చిన్నగా మన తెలుగులో చెప్పాలంటే అన్నం ఉడికిందో లేదో చేయాలంటే ఏంది ఒక మెతుకు చూస్తాం అంతే ఒక మెతుకు ఉడకకపోతే అన్నం మొత్తం ఉడకనట్టే సేమ్ లాజిక్ ఆల్ ట్రూ నెగేషన్ ఈజ్ వాట్ అట్లీస్ట్ వన్ ఫాల్స్ అట్లీస్ట్ వన్ ఫాల్స్ నెగేషన్ ఈజ్ ఐఎమ్ రైటింగ్ హియర్ అట్లీస్ట్ వన్ ఫాల్స్ అట్లీస్ట్ వన్ ఫాల్స్ సో అట్లీస్ట్ వన్ ఫాల్స్ మీన్స్ వాట్ at least at least means what there exist right at least means what there exist that means there exist x negation p of x there exist x negation p of x that means what there exist x such that p of x is false that means what this is not all true not all true not all true means at least one false at least one false uh, uh, how to write not all true not all true i can write not negation for all x p of x i can write is it correct now actually yes, negation sir. is originally this that means i am giving conclusion negation of for all x p of x is what is equal to what there exist x negation p of x there exist x negation p of x okay this is what negation of all true is equal to uh, what i what i said negation of all true is equal to at least one false at least one false same logic another one i will take p of x is true another one there exist x p of x where p of x is true what is assumption p of x is true what is this indicates there exist x p of x means what some true some of the students of mcs are true some of the students of mcs are true what is the negation negation of this statement is what is that negation of this statement is negation of there exist x p of x that is nothing but negation of some true what is the answer at least some false eh malli modadi kochu avtalli rama at least some false are at least some false means some true are there only true all are, all are false all are false exactly that is equal to some true means some true negation none true some true negation none true none true is nothing but false all false all false all means what for all x false statement p of x is true statement therefore negation of p of x false statement therefore uh, negation of there exist x p of x is equal to what for all x negation of p of x for all x negation of p of x is it correct okay just remember these two points okay we need for that uh, in for the topic and next one yeah you tell this determine whether determine whether 
each of the following statements following statements is true or false now uh, tell me these answers first if a statement is always true it is called as what a proposition which is always true called as tautology yes yes lovely tautology correct a proposition which is always false contradiction contradiction neither tautology nor contradiction contingency right good okay now the first question here zero belongs to five second question five belongs to zero third question uh, see i will give answer it say here itself zero is subset to five and d phi is subset to 0 phi is subset to 0 yeah another one e uh, 0 belongs to 0 0 belongs to 0 next f 0 is proper subset to 0 next one f and g lastly uh, this zero sorry five is subset to five is subset to five next one yeah you take this one also g some h null set is belongs to this i five belongs to five set five J. Uh, this set proper subset to five and this set is it correct uh, proper subset to uh, this one and another one hi j k five proper subset to Phi and again phi is given. No, no need of this. No need of this. Next question. I J K X belongs to X. J K L set X subset to set X. Yum. Uh, set x belongs to set x n phi subset to x next wo phi belongs to x phi belongs to x now one by one what is the first one answer i am giving here black pen answer zero belongs to null set correct all zero belongs to null set means you know what is null set which does not contain any element so this is false statement phi belongs to zero yes all. All. belongs to not subset belongs to false false Next. c1 zero bill zero is subset to phi what is meant by this subset this proper subset means what every element of this set belongs to this set false false right what about d true true phi, uh, phi subset to zero true or false d true true, true. 
true every <laughs> null set is subset to every set that this is what null set is subset to every set subset to every set next one zero belongs to zero true zero true. belongs to zero belongs to means what this entire element must be belongs to in this set false it is a false statement when it is true just i am giving him zero belongs to if this is like this yes this element this one is element of this set then it is true got it yes sir is true statement now here zero this this is the set subset to this false true yeah you, you have to tell yeah you have to tell f yeah. and see the symbol what is the symbol proper subset not subset i told you subset means what every element of this set belongs to this set both are same sets here it is like a proper subset a is true a proper subset a true yeah it's true it's true it's true or false see see i am i am telling once again a proper subset b means every element of a belongs to b every element of a belongs to b and there is at least one element in b which does not belongs to a which does not belongs to a now you tell false okay false 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 exactly this is false right now coming to g true what is this both are same sets both are same set every set is subset to itself this is true statement true next one true five belongs to yeah true next one True. 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 Next one. True. Uh, this is proper subset, not subset. True. 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 Next one. True. Next one. False. False. Exactly. Next one. True. True. All set is subset to every set. Next one. True. False. True. So it belongs to. False. 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 Okay. next one next another set of question finding finding truth set of find the truth set of each of these predicates each of these predicates where the domain is the set of integers where the domain is the set of integers domain is the set of integers first question p of x x square less than 3 Second question: Q of x, x square greater than x. Third question: R of x, 2x plus 1 equal to 0. 2x plus 1 equal to 0. First question: What is the predicate is given as x square less than 3 and x belongs to what set of integers given? I have to calculate what truth set. That means. This predicate is true for what values of x? Okay, here 
x square is less than 3 is true but x equal to 1 1 minus x equal to minus 0 is there 0 minus 1 minus 1 yeah 1 minus 1 therefore the truth set truth set of p is negative 1 0 1 like that you can calculate these two right okay try this these two assignment and one more lastly russell's paradox russell's paradox see the statement what is the russell's paradox uh, you say domain be the set of all sets let the domain what is the domain domain be the set of set of all sets domain be the set of all sets and uh, define yes to be the following set to be the following set to be the following set yes equal to x such that x belongs to x or one can write like this this here x is a set actually a such that a belongs to a you can write like this also okay this is russell paradox statement is that is that is enough observe the statement first one what is the domain domain d is domain d is set of all sets d contains sets d contains sets that means what uh, there is a one set another set another set like this contains some elements here d contains sets elements are the sets then if i define one set yes as what the set yes contains one set is a and what is that a when set yes contains a when a belongs to a when a does not belongs to all of you when a does not belongs to a this is the definition of the given set jartha vinan set yes is defined as what it contains a set a such that how this set will be a does not belongs to a a does not belongs to a or x such that x does not belongs to s can you tell whether this yes exists can you tell this set yes exists let me clear see here uh, what is domain domain d is set of all sets so d contains yes is it correct first agreed agreed the set d contains this set yes okay now because what is d? Sir. what is d it contains all the sets so definitely here yes belongs to d yes belongs to d let us check now jarda chundi now that means what a may be yes also agreed eh? this a may be here yes belongs to yes then then a may be yes a may be yes right let us see whether whether uh, you how can you say whether s is the member or element s is the member of itself s is the member of itself i am taking in place of a yes i am taking because the domain is containing all the sets s is one of the set so i am taking a as yes listen carefully when a is yes when 
yes belongs to yes yes belongs to yes then what is this it must satisfy this condition yes does not belongs to yes artavinda logic if i consider yes is belongs to this yes then definitely it satisfies this condition yes does not belongs to yes and uh, if i consider if yes is not a member of yes if s does not belongs to yes then what i am what is meaning yes is not belongs to yes means this yes must be belongs to yes because it is not belongs to means it not satisfying this condition not satisfying means what s yes belongs to yes so what is this one this is it is a contradiction it is a contradiction therefore the such set such set yes defined above defined above does not exist does not exist does not exist this is called russell's paradox what is russell's paradox gives it is an example of not a set russell paradox gives example for a not a set ఇక మీకు అర్థం కావాలంటే మగవాళ్ళు బాయ్స్ బాయ్స్ సీ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ ఐఎమ్ ఎలాబరేటింగ్ దిస్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ దిస్ కాన్సెప్ట్ లెట్ ఎస్ బి ద సెట్ లైక్ దిస్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఏ ఏ ఈజ్ ద పర్సన్ ఏ ఏ ఈజ్ ది పర్సన్ బిలాంగ్స్ టు ఎస్ సచ్ దట్ ఎట్లా ఉండాలి అంటే హీ ఈస్ లైక్ దట్ ఏ పర్సన్ హూ డస్ నాట్ షేవ్ హిమ్సెల్ a person who does not shave himself belongs to this set that is the definition is such person exist evaraithe gaddam geesukolekapothara vallu ee set lo untaru vallantala vallu gaddam geesukokapothe vallu ee set lo untaru atlanti person ee set lo unnada anedi doubt if i consider yes unnadu an ankunte if yes belongs to yes unnadu anukunte definitely ikkada em kavale ee definition satisfy kavali so s does not belongs to s means meaning what a person shaves himself does not shave himself s belongs to s means s belongs to s means what a person shaves does not shave himself not belongs to means what shaves himself again i am considering here does not shave shaves himself ante daniki ade contradiction ostundi that is why such type of set does not exist this is one beautiful example of russell's paradox similarly another one is there what is that cantor paradox anyway just this is one example for russell's paradox idi inta easy ga ardham kadu meer nimmalanga gucho na alochinchukondi okay meer edaithe pani cheyagal cheyalero then aa pan aa set lo meer untaru aa definition ni nenu cheyaleyenu anukunte chestunanu ostundi chestunanu anukunte cheyaledanu ostundi so meera exist karu this is one example it's already three huh? okay i will stop here this is one simple topic cartesian product examples and uh, truth sets and quantifiers for the sets any doubts any doubts no sir shall i continue no, for 15 more minutes shall i continue No sir. No, okay. I will stop.